Good morning! In a previous lesson, we showed standing wave patterns on a string and explained that standing wave patterns are only able to be created at specific wavelengths and therefore frequencies. For example, standing waves are possible at 15, 30, and 45 hertz on this string. However, while working on the demonstration, I noticed that I was able to set up a standing wave pattern at 22 hertz. Flippin physics! So here's the question. If standing waves are only allowed at 15 and 30 hertz and nowhere in between on this string, then why do we see a standing wave pattern at 22 hertz? Nope, I do not see the standing wave pattern. Not at 22 hertz. I see it at 15 and 30 hertz though. Yeah, okay. I'll add the video echo effect and you should be able to see it better. I see it now. I can see it. However, the standing wave patterns at 15 and 30 hertz clearly have larger amplitudes, right? I agree. Okay, yes, yes, the standing wave patterns at 15 and 30 hertz have larger amplitudes. However, there is still a standing wave pattern being created at 22 hertz. Let me add a zoomed in view of the 22 hertz example showing the left half of the string with both the slow motion and video echo effect as well. Now, I want to get back to the fact that a standing wave pattern exists here, even though we determined in a previous lesson that this was not possible. So I want to know, we said it is not possible, but there it is. Why? I don't, I don't know. You got me. Me either. Oh, come on. Y'all can do better than that. Well, why did we say it was not possible in the first place? Because there are nodes or locations of total destructive interference on either end of the string. So the only wavelengths which are possible on this string have to end with the wave at the equilibrium position at both ends of the string. For example, 15 hertz has half a wavelength, 30 hertz has two half wavelengths or one full wave, and 45 hertz has three half wavelengths or one and one half wavelengths. Each of those is an integer multiple of a half wavelength, and therefore both ends of the wave are at the equilibrium position. Well, that's it then. Why? Yeah, what? Look closely at the left end of the string, where the oscillator is. Where the oscillator is going up and down 22 times every second. Oh, and that end is not really a node. Yeah, it's close to a node because it only oscillates up and down a little bit. However, it's still not a node. Right, the left end is not actually a node, so in this example, we can get wavelengths which are not integer multiples of half wavelengths. Billy, how many nodes are in this standing wave pattern? How many nodes? So how, how many locations have total destructive interference? Well, uh, the, the right end is a node because it really is fixed in place, and it it looks like there is one other node a little more than a third of the length of the string to the right on the oscillator. Correct. There are two nodes in the standing wave pattern at 22 hertz. Also, we know the length of the string is 0.865 meters from a previous lesson, and I measured the distance from the oscillator to the node that is nearest to the oscillator to be 0.265 meters. That means we can determine the wavelength of the wave in this standing wave pattern. And once we know that, we can determine the speed of the wave. Okay, there is half a wavelength between the two nodes on the string and we know that that distance is the length of the string minus 0.265 meters or 0.60 meters. So the wavelength of the standing wave pattern on this string at 22 hertz is, uh, well, 1.2 meters. And we know the speed of the wave equals frequency times wavelength or 22 times 1.2, which equals 26.4 or 26 meters per second with two significant digits. And in a previous lesson, we determined the speed of this wave to be 26.1922, or 26 meters per second with two significant digits. I would say that confirms our hypothesis of why this standing wave pattern can exist on this string. Cool. Yeah, cool. Nice. Absolutely. You figured it out and showed the wavelength and frequency result in a similar wave speed to a previous video. Very nice. Now, I do want to reiterate that the only reason this standing wave pattern was able to be set up on this string between the allowable half wavelengths 
is because one of the two ends of the string was not quite a node. This is not true of examples where the two ends have to be nodes, like a stringed instrument, or where the two ends have to be anti-nodes, like an open pipe instrument, or where one end has to be a node and the other end has to be an anti-node, like a closed pipe instrument. Uh, what are those? Do not worry, Billy. We will get to those in future lessons. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you. But I want to know it now. I know, Billy. <laughs>